Linux Rewind 2022. This year, there's a lot that went down in the Linux sphere and it's time to celebrate with a new year by taking a look at what exciting things happened in Linux with the 2022 Rewind. Let's begin. Yeah, it's Rewind time. Rust is coming to Linux. This was a huge theme throughout the year 2022. It was an exciting year all around for Rust, especially in the Linux space. During the Linux Plumbers Conference, Rust proved that it could stay on par with C Linux drivers for an NVMe drive by implementing the same driver code in Rust and running benchmark comparisons. This is absolutely necessary to see how Rust can perform against the majority written C Linux kernel drivers, and it was exciting to see that the drivers presented were on par with C. Speaking about Rust in the Linux kernel, our first bit of code introduced in the Linux kernel by Linus Torvalds himself. What did we get? Well, we got an introductory edition of Rust support in the Linux kernel with kernel intervals, kbuild infrastructure, Rust crates and bindings for initial minimum, viable build, and Rust kernel documentation and samples. 2022 will forever be known as the introduction of Rust in the Linux kernel. Now we're not just gonna talk about Rust in the kernel, but it is big news for 2022. And speaking of Rust in Linux, System76 is hard at work and has been developing a Rust-based desktop environment for Linux on their Pop! OS Linux distribution. The team over at System76 for Pop! OS has been diligently working on the next generation desktop environment for Linux on their Pop! OS distro. Yes, it's a complete Rust-based desktop environment. We should be seeing the update and a potential alpha release early in the 2023 year. I don't know what you all spent most of your time using this year. Let me know in the comments section below. But for 2022, I used Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and Arch Linux for the most part. My favorite setup of all and the most time I spent was on Xvara's Xmonad setup. If you're looking to dive deep into a beautiful configuration on Xmonad, I'll put a link in the description below so you can install it on your own Arch Linux-based machine. And this has also been a huge year for Linux on Apple machines, specifically the M1 and M2, received their first development for Apple's direct rendering management system. And you can see Asai Lena's initial post here that says they're working on a new GPU driver kernel somewhere around August 11th. This was posted, and boy, did we get some awesome development from the Acai Linux team. Acai Linux has been taking things to the next level by supplying an operating system that's available for MacBooks, specifically the M1 and M2 architectures, and it's making a mark with a lot of Linux users trying it out. Let me know if you've tried it out. Not only did we get this early on DRM support, but by the end of the year, we also received Apple's initial GPU drivers from Acai Linux as well. That's right, Apple GPU drivers now in Acai Linux. With the team excited to announce their initial driver release, this happened recently in 2022. Ever since that August 11th date, they've made tremendous progress introducing these initial drivers on December 7th, 2022. So now let's talk about the most popular Linux gaming distributions this year. Well, this may be skewed a little bit because it's strictly for gaming, but I would say it's an overall good representation of what we're all using. According to the latest Steam survey, we're roughly sitting here. But before we quite get there, we have to talk about the Steam Deck because this was released in February of this year and has really upheld and made the market a lot better for Linux as a whole because it has introduced many new gamers directly to Linux and why it's not surprising to see in the survey that Steam OS takes 24% of the share as far as Linux goes for gaming with the Steam OS Hollow 64-bit. Coming in second is Ubuntu at around 11% of people using it for gaming purposes on Linux. Then we have Arch Linux at 9%, Manjaro at 6.5, Pop OS on par with Linux Mint for about 4% of people using it who use Steam on their Linux distribution, and then around 41.5% other Linux distributions that are out there also running SteamOS. Now, I didn't include the freedesktop.org SDK, which has around 6.5% of the share along the lines with Manjaro in this chart, just because it can be ran on flat packs across the board. So that's quite exciting to see how Linux is building up in the gaming space. But while we're at it, let's talk about what was popular in 2022 on DistroWatch. Now, this isn't 
a great way to actually see what the most popular Linux distribution is, but it is a good way to tell what people are searching for throughout the year and what they keep landing on, at least on DistroWatch. Hopefully I'll present some actual statistics later. As we all know, Ubuntu is probably the top when it comes to downloads for the year. What was popular on DistroWatch is MX Linux is number one, Endeavor OS 2, Mint 3, Manjaro 4, Pop OS 5, Ubuntu 6, Fedora 7, Debian 8, Garuda 9, and Linux Lite being 10. Congratulations to those distros for making their way up the list this year. Now let's talk about the goofy bugs that were discovered in the kernel in this 2022 rewind. And if you're enjoying this rewind, make sure to subscribe and like the video so I know to make more like this. Goofy bug number one. User space apps were broken if they contained an X at the front of an application name due to some DRM or direct rendering manager code for the GPU that was discovered this year and written years ago. So it's been affecting systems for a very long time. There's plans to patch this. If you run a VM network on your system or use the VM network kernel device driver, it has also been updated because now it's defaulting to higher speeds, like 1000 gigabits per second, instead of being stuck at 10 megabits per second, which is allowing higher speeds for our virtualization networks and comms to potentially be quicker because systems have come such a long way. This was something also overlooked. A bug in the Linux kernel was also potentially found that could damage displays, which was introduced in the 5.19 kernel, specifically .12, and was fixed very shortly after by the kernel maintainers. There was a pretty large vulnerability in the, in the XORG server that could execute remote code. Linux will not use Dash 03 optimizations, even with a new proposal that was shot down by Linus Torvalds himself, basically saying that there's just not enough predictability when going to O3 optimizations. They're going to keep them down for the time being. HP decided to release a new Linux-based laptop called the HP Dev 1 with a pretty powerful AMD Ryzen 7 Pro, 5850U processor, 16 gigs of memory, one terabyte of M.2 NVMe solid state storage, and an overall wonderful design that was praised by some, a big deal for the Linux community, offering you Pop! OS right out of the box. Let me know if any of you purchased it. Okay, so here's some big news. In 2022, remember when NVIDIA open sourced their drivers? Yeah, that happened in 2022. No one would have even foreseen that happening in the next 10 years, let alone this year with big news out of NVIDIA. This makes a great deal for competition against AMD in the Linux space. And I'm sure everyone's excited to get some of the new NVIDIA graphics cards ported into Linux and supported, including updating our proprietary drivers so that we can even more efficiently and effectively run our GPU cards on Linux. A big win by the Linux community, including NVIDIA this year. Now let's talk about some of our favorite distributions and what they introduced. Pipewire and Ubuntu? Yeah, that's a big deal. Starting with 22.10, dreams were made for those who like using Pipewire instead of Pulse Audio in what is considered a big change for the Ubuntu Linux distribution. They changed out their multimedia processor to Pipewire out of a seemingly unforeseen change. Also in Ubuntu, the long-term support edition of Ubuntu 22.04 got released this year in April and features GNOME 42, but they kind of messed up that deal because not everything was actually upgraded GNOME 42. You wouldn't get full GNOME 42 support with the GTK apps until Ubuntu 22.10. Other things that were introduced in Ubuntu 22.04 include Wayland by default, more docking options, new power saving behaviors, and of course, a restart on the long-term support for five years using this Linux distribution. Speaking of Ubuntu, they've been pushing for their Ubuntu core for the Internet of Things heavily this year, as I'm sure they've seen a huge market potential in the ever-growing field of embedded IoT and want to compete in that space. There's been all sorts of mentions of Ubuntu core, and I've also given it a try myself and initially impressed by some of the out-of-box features that you can use, although I'm not a fan of using snaps. For everything that I do and containerizing my apps, I do see a potential for Ubuntu Core in the IoT sphere. Let's see what happens in 2023. When it comes to CentOS, a huge provider for the server space Linux community, well, you can say bye-bye to CentOS. We hardly knew thee. Now Rocky Linux and Alma Linux have taken its place in the stable server Linux space. That's because CentOS announced their end of life and stopping of support of CentOS 
it's too bad because I really enjoyed using that stable Linux distribution. Instead, they're now focused more on the rolling release version, CentOS Stream. We also have to talk about the Raspberry Pi and Raspbian OS, now with big changes that were made to, to the Raspberry Pi operating system, in, including the deletion of the default Pi user and the start of an experimental Wayland image for Raspberry Pis. And in other big news for Raspbian, the Debian-based operating system, the image actually got upgraded for supporting 64-bit architectures, which actually improved some of the performance on Raspberry Pis. How incredible is that? A big year for Raspberry Pis and Raspbian, the Linux-based operating system. And now let's talk a little bit more about free and open source and development in that community. This year was a big year for Richard Stallman because he decided to teach us C by introducing a C language intro manual around September 6th of 2022. Yes, you can now learn C with Richard. On another note, will Google rule the world between AI development and their ever-expanding offering of hardware and software? They're now offering a new Rust-based Linux operating system for machine learning applications called Cat OS, which is a big deal because, as we can all see, AI is becoming more and more prevalent, and Google wants to remain dominant when it comes to operating in that space. So they decided, why not have developers for these applications use their own operating system? Potentially, who knows, to maybe even gather more data for their own systems in machine learning. We'll see as this develops because it's fairly new in 2022, but this Cat OS is a Rust-based Linux operating system, and it's something to keep track of, at least in my mind. Non-Linux world, but still exciting because it runs a lot of our Linux distributions for us as far as testing goes. VirtualBox 7 was released, and it's quite exciting. Check out my video. I'll post a link in the description below. But overall, there's been fairly big changes to VirtualBox 7, and the too long don't watch on it is, yeah, you should probably upgrade to VirtualBox 7 if you haven't already. There's a lot of exciting features. Another surprise for us is Peppermint, the Linux operating system with an XFCE desktop and a changed base distribution, has new features and development. It's a great minimal desktop experience. We'll see if they continue on developing with Peppermint as I haven't seen much from it since the beginning of the year. When it comes to desktop environments, GNOME has seen some of the greatest changes this year with the GNOME 42 desktop being introduced to us, which boasts a significant number of new features according to them, with things like a new global dark UI, new screenshot app, other upgraded GNOME apps, and a consistency across the GTK4 platform for our apps, new default apps, and performance improvements. Again, a big year for GNOME. A shout out to the Linux kernel developers and maintainers, as they've brought a lot of improvements to the Linux kernel. One such inc improvement was an 8,450% increase in the, in the performance of the get random function of the Linux kernel, making great optimizations in the open source community. Another example was 70% faster kernel builds because of great optimizations and make sure to support a Linux maintainer or developer because they donate their time just so we can have free and open source systems that we get to call home. Well, that's my Linux rewind for 2022, at least the majority of things that I covered over the year. I know I missed some things for the last year, so make sure to tell us about some of your favorite things that got introduced into Linux for the 2022 year in the comments section below. If you haven't already, subscribe for more of these videos. If you made it all the way through, you might as well. You're enjoying the content and make sure to like the video so others enjoy this as well. Thank you for watching and I wish you a happy new year. I'll catch you in another video.